Hi, my name is Randall Loy, and all the places you could be in the world, you're watching me on the YouTube Infertility Channel. And I'm going to start off this particular episode by a great question from Sherry from Portland, Oregon. She says, I'm 31 years of age, and I've been seeing a reproductive medicine specialist here in Portland. I'm not sure if I should be seeing my regular OBGYN for routine examinations during the time that I'm seeing him. What do you think? That is a fabulous question. And I want to consider that today because most of our patients are between the ages of 25 and 44 years of age. And if you think about it, those are the reproductive years. And what are the major causes of death? What are the major causes of disease? How often should you be screened? What should you be screened with? What kinds of laboratory tests? How often mammograms and pap smears and all that? That's what I'm gonna to cover today. I think this is really important information. But bottom line is, you do need to go to your OBGYN, your family medicine doctor, or your internist to continue your routine exams. Your reproductive medicine specialist, your REI, your infertility specialist, whatever you wanna call him or her, is typically not equipped to keep up with your longitudinal care. So let's talk about what are the leading causes of death in the ages from 25 to 44. First of all, number one would be cancer. Number two, motor vehicle accidents. Number three, cardiovascular disease, heart attacks. Number four, suicide. Number five, AIDS, HIV disease. Uh, number six, homicide. Number seven, stroke. And number eight, diabetes and its complications. So those are the major reasons that women in your age group die. All right, so what are the leading causes of disease? What sorts of things should your doctor be thinking about in reference to a woman your age? Diabetes, number one. Number two, ears, nose, and throat, and upper respiratory tract conditions. Number three, menstrual disorders. Number four, musculoskeletal and soft tissue disease. A lot of weakened athletic related injuries in your age group. Obesity, sexually transmitted diseases, and finally, sexual assault and domestic abuse. By the way, it's really important if you have those things ongoing and your doctor's not asking about sexual abuse, please tell him or her they can get you help. All right, so on the routine screening history, what he or she will be looking for will be the reason for your visit. And you might say it's your annual exam. And you'll be asked about any changes in your medical health, any recent surgeries, and any family history that's changed. For example, anybody with a stroke or heart attack, any recent diagnosis of cancer. Then you, you'll be asked about any dietary or nutritional changes, any exercise related changes, and finally, any tobacco or alcohol or drug usage. You should be asked about sexual or domestic partner abuse and also about sexual practices. Now on the physical examination, obviously blood pressure, pulse, temperature, body mass index, that needs to be calculated. Um, but then a, a routine exam going from head to toe with a special emphasis in that 25 to 44 age group on the abdomen and the pelvis. Of course, I think that's my bias as a GYN. All right, so in terms of, of periodic screening, pap smears, and if you are monogamous, one sexual partner, and you've had a negative pap smear in the past, that's probably now every three years is the recommendation. Not only a pap smear, but cholesterol and lipid screening. So that, so that would be uh, total cholesterol, HDL, the good cholesterol, LDL, the bad cholesterol, and triglycerides. And that should be done at least every five years. And if there's any family history of cardiovascular disease, maybe more frequently. Now, based upon other risk factors you might have, there could be other screening, um, such as mammograms that are younger age, and those should start at age 40, by the way. But if, if you have a family history of breast cancer, you'd want to start those earlier. I, I do want to reiterate one point that if you do have a family history of breast cancer or other systemic diseases, then please make that known to your doctor so that he or she can screen you appropriately. Uh, so my bias, when you go to your OBGYN or family practitioner or internist, please tell him or her that you are also being seen by us and tell them about the medications we might have you on. Please continue your prenatal vitamins and uh, also continue any supplements such as folic acid that we might also have you on. I had a patient a few years ago 
who underwent some screening by her OBGYN. And she asked me, she goes, hey, my doctor screened me for malaria, but I've never even been to Africa. And I said, really? And she said, yeah, he screened me for anti-malaria hormone. And I looked at it and it was anti-mullerian hormone or AMH. And so I told her, no, he didn't screen you for malaria. He screened your ovaries for your ovarian reserve. So I look forward to seeing you back here next week on the Infertility Channel. Thanks again for joining me. Be sure to share this video with your friends and subscribe to catch all new episodes each week here on the Infertility Channel. Plus, follow us on Facebook and Twitter. I love hearing from you. Comment below or tell me what you want to see on future episodes by sending me an email to comments at infertilitychannel.org. Until next week.